invincible. Welcome to Rathkeel for a huge night in the Electric Ireland Sigerson Cup. It's a semi-final and it is the old IT Tralee, now known as MTU Kerry Campus in Tralee. They have a rich history in this competition. Well, certainly in the late 90s, NUIG have an even richer tradition. They go all the way back. They've won it 22 times, but not for a long time. Neither team has been in the final for a long, long time, but tonight is a great opportunity. One of them in the next hour or two will be in the final against the winners of the second semi-final, which is also tonight a little bit later at 7.30, UL against DCU and Carlo. And there's a live stream going to be available on that one as well. So it's all free. It's all available free to you to watch. We have a huge crowd here at the game already. Loads of cars in the car park behind me. Lots of people going to watch online on Facebook and YouTube. And thanks to Electric Ireland and the Higher Education GEA Executive Committee for making these games available. You've got to showcase these fantastic talents that we have here because this is a special, special competition going all the way back to 19. 11. It deserves to be seen. It deserves to be respected. It deserves its place. It has produced so many magic moments down the decades and indeed over a century. And it still continues to do that today. Out in the middle of the pitch, the referee, Jonathan Hayes, is there. I had a word with him a minute ago and he was telling me he's showing the kind of talent that we saw from him early on. So watch out for him tonight and the likes of Jack Savage in there at corner forward in fact what a forward line they have with Darren Moyahan as well MTU Kerry managed of course by a Kerry he could be playing against the Kerry College and 32 Cathal Heenan who started against Ulster University and there's loads more subs but you get the idea there I need to get on to the MTU Kerry team now and they're getting their photograph taken out on the pitch there and they're those gold jerseys I guess you would say they are out in the middle there getting the photograph snapped big squad of players there and very talented as well so for them in goals Keith O'Leary Kerry man of course they are there's uh, in the 15 we've been given 14 out of 15 are Kerry men the one exception I'll come to in a moment number two Michael Potts from Dr Crooks number three Tomas O'Connor from Ballymac and number four Tipperary man Dean Carew in there in the middle of it all from Upper Church Drumbean and in the half back line, even Looney, number five, six, Mike Breen, of course, one of the stars of the team, and seven, Fionan Mackesy. In midfield, it's Mark O'Shea and Dara Lynn. Mark from Dr. Crooks, Dara Lynn from Legion. He's wearing nine. 
Paul O'Shea is 10. Number 11 is Tomas O'Shea from On Talks. And there you see the huddle out there. And that is the squad there. And that looks like a number 18 there, actually. So that seems to be to me to be the 15 players on the team going to start. So it looks like 18 is out there. That's Mark Ryan from Rathmore. We'll keep an eye on that. And going back to the team, so we have Tomas O'Shea at 11. Dara Moynihan at 12. And he got a goal for Kerry and beat in the dubs last weekend. Just looking up before I go to the full forward line to see NUIG getting their photograph taken. So they're nearly ready. The full forward line then for MTU Kerry. Jack Savage at 13. Recalled to the Kerry team after four years. He's 26 years old and he is in his peak. 14 is Tony Brosnan and the captain and 15 Ryan O'Grady. So those are the lineups and that is us almost ready for the start. The referee almost ready to throw the ball in. Jonathan Hayes, as I say, is the man in the middle and I'm just checking now on our messages now to see because you're very welcome to comment to us on Facebook and on YouTube the game available on both tonight so I'll be keeping an eye on both and keeping an eye on the pitch here as well of course to see what goes down because this as I say is a huge night Hayes the referee throws it in at the big fella there that's why maybe why he was in Mark Ryan from Rathmore wearing 18 but starting the game and gobbling the ball up from the throw in right away for MTU Kerry Jack Savage comes out around the middle of the field takes a couple of solos off the right pumps it in with the left but that clearly was not read in the full forward line they weren't on the same connection there because NUIG easily Pick that one up and now they will try to build an attack and that's Gavin Burke the number four I told you about he doesn't stay in left corner back by any means he will roam about and is a very dangerous and creative player as well we had an awful burst of rain here about an hour ago but now thank goodness there is no rain and conditions are pretty perfect a little bit slippy of course because of that rain but other than that and it's a chilly evening the lights are good here in the McNeville Park in Rathkeel and the players look to be settling into the game the surface is good obviously a little bit soft for this time of year but not bad at all and no wind to talk off either now MTU Curry with their captain Brosnan way out on the right hand side going towards a corner trying to find a way to go into the middle throwing a few ships dropping the shoulder and the referee brings that back uh, because he says there was an infringement there so I did promise to keep an eye and I will for any comments on what you think of how the game is going or where you're watching from or even any little bits of information you want to offer and I'm not precious either if you want to correct me I am quite open to that that's a super finish there from the free, right in the middle of the post from a bad angle, but the captain Brosman, Brosnan made that look extremely simple. So 1,100 people already watching on YouTube alone shows the interest in this particular game. Two Sigerson semi-finals tonight. This is the first. That's basically Kerry against Galway. No offence meant to the Tipperary men and the Sligo men and the Offaly men, but the colleges are based in those counties. And both teams nullifying each other at the minute, but MTU Kerry will be happy with the start they've made. One point up, and they've coped with any attack that NUIG have tried to start. I did mention the history right at the start. I will come back to that in the next few minutes about what these teams have done in the past, but it's all about tonight. There was a message I noticed on Twitter from Kieran Donaghy from Star for his old mate, Aidan O'Mahony, who is managing MTU Kerry. So a little bit of Kerry brotherhood there. And Kerry brotherhood out on the pitch. That's good running into position there. And Smoynahan, of course, leaves it off to Mark O'Shea. Trying to beat one of the defensive lines and get past there. The big fella from Dr. Crooks gives it inside. And this is the captain Brosnan he's got a lovely left foot as you see and he's giving it into Tomas O'Shea and he's trying to get in behind and he's causing trouble he might even score a goal he doesn't but he gets a point and the referee deserves credit there for letting that go because I thought there for a moment that it might be a free or a f even a penalty actually but he let it go 
And there you see the replay. So dangerous. Two men trying to get to him. And he nipped inside and got the first score from play in this game. So NUIG with Sean Kelly out in the middle there. Now trying to get going. Big night last night in Dangan. The college reached the Fitzgibbon semi-finals where they'll play GMIT in an all Galway game. Can they do a double tonight by getting to the Sigerson final? The connection, of course, is Fionn McDonough, who played last night and got a goal in that game, their only goal. Now, the referee has spotted something in there off the ball, and he's giving, giving a free in. So he obviously kept an eye there on the defence and what they were doing, and he spotted some kind of infringement and has given a free in to NUIG. And this should be the opening score for them. Matthew Tierney, number 11, and the vice captain of Galway this year leading the team tonight he's played midfield he's played center half forward he's always in and around there and the opening point for NUIG is converted from a free just trying to read some of the numbers actually and they're very difficult the green numbers under the floodlights and there's an interception though maybe the keeper didn't spot him either because that was Cahill Donahue getting in there to intercept and NUAG might get their first score from play and indeed they do 2-2 two, two. two points in a minute two points for Matthew Tierney and they are back on level terms now the YouTube viewership has jumped up by 500 in a couple of minutes from 1100 to 1600 MTU carry Oh, and they've given it away again. They did it a minute ago, and they've given it to Tierney this time. And you don't want to be doing that. There's a 21 out there, actually, for NUIG. I've just spotted Gavin Durkin from Mayo. So he started the game. That wasn't in the 1-15 to that I was given. So they brought him in. There he is on, on the ball now, the Mayo man. I'm trying, as I say, to spot the numbers, and it's almost impossible on the far side. So forgive me if I get one or two wrong. I'm not guessing. I'm trying my best, but almost impossible to see. And that one goes wide. So it remains 2-2. Two -two. Now the last kick out was intercepted. So I wonder what he's going to do this time. Fergie on YouTube says, a dinger approaching, I reckon. I think you're right. He says, Tommy Conroy is such a loss. What a weapon. Absolutely. Also, Sean Mulcairn who got injured in that Ulster University game that we live streamed. So two big injuries there, two significant losses for NUIG, but they're still here and they're level in this semi-final. MTU waiting for a runner. Evan Looney put himself forward there, but is now drifting back into position. NUIG just holding their line. Referee pointing to where he wants it from. He's looking for a bit of movement here, Savage. And he gets it. Not too far away, but at least it gets the ball moving. And it's dropped in there by Mark O'Shea, but kicked out of play by Colin Murray. Number two from Mount Bellew. Savage from Karen's O'Rahillies, who had an excellent Kerry championship. Now Brosnan, who looks so lively, taking on the defence again, and the referee says that is a free. So running at this defence is drawing frees, and the referee running away as if he was going to add on a little bit there or bring them in a bit closer, but no, he's just taking up a good position. Now, if you missed it, if you joined his late, Brosnan put one over from almost the exact same angle or maybe a little bit further out, but nails it again. Three to two, two for Brosnan. Owen Gornley says Brosnan to get at least one five. Well, he's on the way. Now, serious press there. Referee, I think, tried to let that go, but brought it back to a free, and Connor Carroll takes it quickly. So NUIG, one point down early on. Very interesting early exchanges. 
Brosnan certainly looks very, very dangerous and MTU have turned them over again. Now Mortimer Murphy is commenting that he reckons Mike Breen is injured. Well, he certainly had a hamstring strain that was talked about. They thought he might be okay for tonight, but they weren't sure. Now, NUIG with Tierney again trying to get through, trying to get a, an equaliser, but it's gone loose and eventually a free out. And our thanks to Mortimer Murphy for also telling me that Dara Lynn is pronounced Dara Line. Thank you for that. Appreciate that. And I'm also told that this is a different Fionn McDonough. Two Fionn McDonoughs in the same college, one playing Fitzgibbon, one playing Sigerson again thank you for that this is definitely Tommaso Shea from on Gale Talks and he's definitely under pressure but he's doing well there to get it back to Tommaso Connor and the referee not happy with that challenge there and he's got the book out actually and he's going to have a word with Cattle Donoghue so apologies to the other Fionn McDonough I was wondering how he's playing two games two nights in a row Now they go short, Paul O'Shea on it now. Number 10 from Kilcommon. This is O'Connor. They're trying to get it into the dangerous full forward line and they are dangerous. Brosnan so lively on the ball. So elusive, but he has actually been turned over on this occasion and NUIG will look to try and hit on the break, but there's a lot of MTU carry men already back in their own half. In fact, they're outnumbering NUIG by about eight to two. Such is the way it's played these days. Very cold night here in Rathkeel. But apart from that, no wind, no rain at the minute. Let's keep it that way. Now, what can MTU carry do? They're looking for the direct ball. Oh, and it slips over the defence and Brosnan has got it. They're chasing him down, but he still gets onto the left foot, but doesn't connect. And he does get a free, though. But he was hoping for a lot more when the two NUIG defenders went for that and didn't get it. The danger sign there. And you see the threat. It's an obvious one. Brosnan is in there, and if they can feed him, there could be a goal in there somewhere. Somebody predicted a goal tonight for Brosnan and certainly the way he started, you put your money on him. Just checking the Facebook stream. We're on there and we are also on YouTube. So you have a choice of places to watch the game. Connor Carroll, the Roscommon goalkeeper, looks to see where he can go. Goes wide right, hangs in the air though. Not that there's much of a wind to hold it up, but MTU carry read it well and they won it on the break and they get a free in. I wonder will they look for Brosnan again. He's been very closely watched in there. Colin Murray from Mount Bellew, the number two, is very, very close to him. So they're very aware of the threat. And just in front of them, there's about three Marin jerseys, not marking anyone, just marking space. So it's a difficult route to get it into Brosnan, but if they can get him on the ball in there, he could decide this game. Now, that looks to be going to the right, and it's gone wide. So 13 minutes gone, four points to two. Carroll went right the last time, but he's looking to go left this time, and he is, and he's gone to Rory Egan. He's got support from Gavin Burke on the sideline, stretching the play, doesn't need him, comes inside and gives it to Owen Kelly, to Sean Kelly. So they started on the left, but heading down the right. And 
and they come all the way back to Kelly again. 21 is Gavin Durkin. And they also were looking for the direct ball through to see if they can hurt. But the pattern of the game is established. You see a familiar one in men's Gaelic football in 2022 that 13 of the MTU got it back and it's a free in now. So two points for the college from Tralee, then two for NUAG, then two again for MTU Kerry, and now NUAG trying to find their way back into this. Looks a good position for a right footer, and he measures it perfectly. Tom O'Colhane from Salt Hill. Actually, that's 15. Cahill Sweeney, sorry. Trying to see the numbers, as I say. And it's very hard, those sort of light green on the maroon. Now, the goalkeeper gets it right this time. That's what he tried to do earlier, and it didn't work. They conceded. But Keith O'Leary got that one right. That's Paul O'Shea giving it back, and Fionn Mackesy involved. That's O'Shea again going back. We'll try another route forward. This is Mackesy from Ardfert. It really is an interesting tactical battle at the minute, like a game of chess out there. Tomas O'Connor from Bally Macta, number three. Players giving it around, passing the parcel, and then trying to find an opening, trying to find somewhere to burst through, waiting for NUAG to come out, trying to draw them out. Number 17 there I've just spotted is Greg Horan from Austin Stacks. So he's in there and there's an interception now and this is danger. Oh, on a, a low tackle there, foot tackle, managed to get that, but NTU carry almost caught out there. And two men down. One is number 12, that's Dara Moynihan. And the other man who's getting to his feet now, I think, is Cahill Donoghue. And he is okay, but Moynihan looks to be in a little bit of bother there. He's getting to his feet now as well, thankfully. Or at least on one of them. So, more or less midway through the first half. Referee going to hop this one. Punch clear, but the break goes to MTU Kerry. Team's very well matched, you have to say that. This looks like it could go right down to the wire. Not much between them, as you would expect in a semi-final. Referee giving a free there to the Tralee College, and talking of the Tralee College, I did say I'd mentioned the history, and IT Tralee as MTU Kerry used to be known, won three Sigersons in the late 90s. The talent they had then, Seamus Moynihan, Mike Frank Russell, Porrick Joyce, players like that, and in 99 when they last won it, the captain was none other than Jim McGuinness. Now this is Brosnan, he's one of the current crop of superstars on that team, what a player he is, what a talent, but on this occasion, that attack breaks down. Tomas O'Shea from on Gale Talk trying to profit there, but Brosnan picks up the pieces and Jack Savage get a kick on it and puts it extremely high and that could be accurate. No, it's just gone to the left and wide. But when you see Savage and you see Brosnan out there, you just feel that there is something going to happen every time they get it. They have just that look about them. They're menacing and they're fast and they're sharp. And if they get a chance at all, you know they'll bury it. But NUAG have a lot of resilience. They've lost a couple of key men and Sean Mulcairn and Tommy Conroy. But as he showed against Ulster University when they were well behind at halftime, they were able to come from behind and win that day. Good composure and resilience, good characters. Now right, this is Sean Kelly to Paul Kelly. 
perhaps to throw it inside and this is Sweeney getting in there trying to get over and he does get it over and that's the equalising score Keith O'Leary in goals from Kilcommon and Kerry four points each after 19 minutes Looking at the big men off camera around the middle here who he's aiming for and he's aiming for Mark O'Shea from Dr. Crooks. Doesn't get there and it's broken down instead. And there's a free by Mackesy and the referee gives it. No need to get a word, just get on with the game. Tierney plays it into the left corner. Durkin. Mullen. And that's a good ball into the full forward area and he takes his mark. They managed to find just a little opening there. There's not many of them, but they managed to get it through nicely there. I think it's Paul Kelly, isn't it? As I say, those numbers hard to see. I'm guessing eight, but it could even be a six. It's hard to see, but I think it was. Yeah, of course it is. It's Kelly, Paul Kelly. Galway captain for this year. So he puts NUHE in front for the first time in the game. 20 minutes gone. One third of the way through. And UAG with their tails up at the minute. They've scored the last three points, but they've given it away. And this was Savage. He'd be looking to get that ball immediately into Brosnan. That's clearly the tactic. Oh, he lays, lays it off brilliantly to the center half forward O'Shea, but didn't quite stick. Fierce tackling going in there and they've turned it over. Good defending by NUIG. Very disciplined there and they get the decision. I was going to say that NUIG haven't had an attack for a while. Certainly haven't looked dangerous. They've scored a few frees but not much from play. But you do feel as I say that there's a threat there if he can move it forward quickly. And if that ball had been transferred into the chest, you never know. They've had a sniff once or twice in there and they've looked very lively. But they're a point down. <laughs> you should have VIP here, Frank. Gives me a chance to check on YouTube and on Facebook just to see the crowd on there. 2,000 watching on YouTube. That's terrific. Right on Facebook and join the game as well. And a big crowd here. Getting a few notes now from a good friend of mine, Donald Barry, who's messaged me to tell me that Paul O'Shea is David Clifford's first cousin. Thanks for that. That's Paul O'Shea at number 10. And at 18, Mark Ryan is a brother of Shane Ryan, 2021 Kerry goalkeeper and actually started against Maynooth. I'll come back to those notes. Thank you for those, Donal. Little tidbits of information, always helpful. NUAG, meanwhile, just trying to get on with the game. This is Sean Kelly. But he's, yeah, he's managed to offload it there. I thought he might get done for overcarrying, but instead they do get the decision. And NUAG have settled well into this game. They were two down and four two down, but Tierney now and Kelly starting to call the shots out there and dictate this game. And there is Tierney now. A little bit of room, a little pocket of space, and he glides past a few defenders and leaves it off. And this could be a point made by Tierney. Comes off the post, I think, and over the bar. And a two-point lead now for NUIG. They are beginning to tick very nicely. And here's a replay off of Tierney with the little burst through the middle and popped over six points to four now. Going back to those notes, the MTU keeper Keith O'Leary is from Kilcommon. Same club as former GA president Sean Kelly. And that is the keeper you see there about to take the kick out. Thanks again to Donal for that. Kick out goes high to the left and breaks again for NUIG. They're having a little bit of a purple patch as we tend to call it in the business. This is Durkin. And the run off the shoulder is from Mullen, Nathan Mullen, a Sligo man. That was a high, unusual ball into the full forward line. You don't see that too much these days, and the defence gobble it up. So MTU carry 
not getting their game together the last seven or eight minutes and there's a heavy shoulder putting his man over the line and the referee says good tackle nothing wrong with that hard hard hitting and it was Michael Potts who's coming into this with a bit of an ankle knock who could do without that and we could do without rain but I'm feeling just a bit of a spit I'm afraid to say hopefully nothing we had a deluge about two hours ago that lasted about five or six minutes was pretty nasty so I'm hoping we don't have another one of those 24 minutes gone five to half time Paul Kelly scored a point a few minutes ago NUIG now with Cahill Sweeney they forced NTU back into defence and now they're trying to fa find a way around them and they really are having to go all the way around them Sweeney again involved and there's a little bit of room here now for Rory Egan so he'll take it into the corner but MTU keeping their distance and just sitting in there and forcing them to come back out so Sweeney pops it back in to Sean Kelly now they make a dart to try and get through and they've ended up more or less the same position they were a moment ago but Calhan decides to go on a run but he doesn't make any progress and yes the rain is coming down now quite heavily here in Rathkeel and the ball goes loose and as the rain comes down MTU carry look to hit on the break and that's an intelligent switch of play there and now they put it in to Brosnan slippy conditions out there but good hands from him on the left and he shoots but that's going to drop short and under the crossbar and Connor Carroll takes that one quite easily 26 minutes gone now in the first half but MTU Kerry get it again at a savage holds it up looking to get a little bit of room and goes for a shot himself I think or is he trying to pass it well it ended up neither come back to those notes from Donald Barry thank you again Donald the fullback Tommaso Connor and centre back Fionan Macasi or Macasi our inter-county hurlers with Kerry play against Antrim in the McDonough Cup and Mark O'Shea plays National League basketball with St Paul's Scots Lakers in Killarney thanks for that now NUAG have come from 4-2 down to 6-4 up so they've got the last four scores and they're motoring very nicely and they're dealing with the threat from Brosnan inside very well after a few shaky moments earlier on and it's all NUIG at the minute holding onto the ball lots of possession this is Durkin rain coming down very heavily now here in Rathkeel so difficult conditions for the crowd never mind for the players and indeed for my commentary notes that are now getting ruined everybody trying to get the umbrellas up to protect themselves we're a few minutes away from half time NUAG have done this a lot the last five or six minutes and then they try and burst through they try to get a score they've scored forwards they have a good team and they work the ball nicely but they end up coming all the way back but they are very patient work it into the corner didn't think he was going to try it from there but you never know Durkin is waiting for it all the way out the pitch he's looking for him but it's gobbled up no it's not the, you see the slippy conditions having an effect but MTU Kerry managed to get the ball referee is going to hold that up because of a injury there referee Jonathan Hayes and we're now in the 28th minute almost the 29th so an intriguing first half in the Electric Ireland 2022 Sigerson Cup semi-finals MTU Kerry formerly IT Tralee who were last in the final in 1999 when they won it with a certain Jim McGuinness as captain looking to get back there for the first time in 23 years and NUIG trying to get back there they last won it way back as well and it was 2000 and three I think it was the last time that they won it 
22 wins in the competition. Going very nicely in this first half. Six points to four up, and they've got the last four. We're now in the 30th minute of the first half, and I'm glad to say that that rain seemed to have stopped. Second semi-final is coming up in another live stream right after this one. And that's from Carlo. That's the Electric Ireland Sigerson Cup second semi-final, DCU against UL. Now, right down in front of me here, this is the number three, Tomas O'Connor from Ballymac. Coming back to Mark Ryan from Rathmore. This is Mark O'Shea trying to make progress. Comes back to Ryan. And there's the ball that they're looking for all the time. Get it into Brosnan on his right foot this time. And he shoots immediately, but it goes just to the left and wide. You can see why they're trying to get it into him. He is so dangerous of either side and so sharp. Doesn't need much room and was unlucky there. We're in added time at the end of the first half. Rory Egan goes back inside and they go back to their goalkeeper. Brosnan trying to apply pressure on him, but composed play by Connor Carroll. And it's NUIG speeding up the right hand side over on the far side from us on our cameras. And we're back to their possession game. This is Tierney. And he uses Egan. Egan just lobs the ball back to Sean Kelly. Three Kellys in that diamond area there for NUIG. The brothers from Moy Cullen. So we had a great night last night in Dangan in the Fitzgibbon Cup and NUIG looking to make it a two in a row now in the Sigerson. They're well placed at the minute, two points up, which of course isn't that much, but it's still impressive because they were 4-2 down and they've got a grip in this game. And they seem to be in control and they seem to be finding ways through this packed defence and they're trying it again. Now this time they don't quite make it. And the referee let that go and it, the ball was lashed clear, but it went straight to a teammate. And now they look for that ball I keep talking about into space and that's hard to defend against and that's Moynihan when you have men like Moynihan and you have Brosnan and you have Savage there you cannot rule out MTU Kerry look he drops the shoulder one way then the other you don't know what way he's going to go because he's two footed gets the kick in and on this occasion it goes wide again he's missed two in the last couple of minutes very unlucky that's half time but those two efforts could easily have gone over and leveled this game it's that close but it's six points to four in the Electric Ireland Sigerson Cup first semi-final. Second one is on a live stream after this. UL against DCU. Don't miss that one. And don't miss the second half here. We'll be back in a few minutes for the start of the second half right here on YouTube and on Facebook.
invincible.
Welcome back for the second half here in Rathkeel. Players coming out. Rain is not coming down, I am very, very glad to say. We had a little bit of rain towards the end of the first half, but it stopped. We hope it holds. Uh, no wind as well. Very chilly, as you'd expect at the beginning of February. And the scoreboard has been rectified as well. Someone at half time had given a goal to MTU on the scoreboard it says Galway not six Tralee not four but for a moment or two there it was one four and I thought did I miss a goal but no we did not miss a goal it is six to four in fact I don't even think there was a goal chance in the first half so almost ready to get underway again you're seeing number 18 out there for MTU and that's um Mark Ryan, of course, from Rathmore, who actually started the game. So it's not a substitution if you're just joining us. We are available on YouTube, on Higher Education GEA, and on their Facebook page as well, here in Rathkeel. Referee is Jonathan Hayes, gets us underway for the second half. Who is going to get into the Sigerson Cup final? NUIG and pole position at the minute, but two points is not enough. But he did play very well in the first half and got the last four points as well. From 4-2 down to 6-4 up, so MTU have not scored in too long. Having to do defending right at the start of the second half. We're up to 2,500 watching on YouTube, plus whatever is watching on Facebook. So tremendous interest, of course, in this game. It is, after all, a Sigerson Cup semi-final. Tierney. It's Matthew Tierney, if you don't know, by the way. Galway vice-captain. It's been going well for NUIG. Last night they won in the Fitzgibbon quarter-finals and set up a game against GMIT, a Galway Derby in the Electric Ireland Fitzgibbon Cup. But what can their footballers do today? There's a nice ball in, and this is dangerous because Durkin put that in there at a nice angle, and there's another ball trying to get through. They're trying to put the ball through, trying to thread it through the eye of the needle, and it didn't quite work. Thank you for all your comments on Facebook and on YouTube. And as I said at the start, I'm very happy to be corrected. And for any information you have, we've had lots of nice little tidbits coming in and some corrections as well. I, I didn't realise there were two Fionn McDonoughs. There was a Fionn McDonough got the goal last night for NUIG and Dangan in the Fitzgibbon. And there's another one here today. I presumed it was the same one, but it's not. Now right, MTU, they need a score. They haven't scored for a long time. That looks dangerous and that spills and it could have fallen for Jack Savage. It doesn't. The first half was the teams really sparring in boxing terms, but now you can hear that the noise level has gone up. It's a bit more intense. Now we're getting down to the business end. And MTU realized they've got to play a lot better. Now there's a hand goes in there and spills that ball and NUIG get it back. And that was, I think that was McDonough actually who got back and got the hand in and is now on it. It is a little bit difficult to see the numbers on those jerseys, but I think that was 14. And as you can hear away over on that far side, the crowd very vociferous there getting into this one. One of these teams in the next half hour, barring extra time, will be the first team through to the Electric Ireland 2022 Sigerson Cup final. They'll play the winners of the next game, which is at 7.30, and that's UL against DCU. DCU, the holders of the competition. UCD have won it 34 times. They played every year since 1911 when George Sigerson got his name on the trophy. NUAG have won it 22 times, formerly UCG, of course. Their last time, 2003. That's the history, but what about tonight? What about this new group of footballers? MTU seem to have livened things up a little bit, but that one spills. And this is when you expect maybe that teams will have to gamble a little bit and gaps might open up. 
NUIG having the better of most of the exchanges and when they get into this sort of position they look dangerous they move the ball well and they're extremely patient as well they all seem to know what they're doing referee lets that go well, he is going to bring it back now for that slap on Tierney the good run by the way was by Nathan Mullen the Sligo man Crossfield carrying the ball and it's a free for NUIG Good camera angle of this one. He's taking great care to place it precisely and make sure the ball is still. Gets his left toe underneath it. Matthew Tierney, Galway vice captain, captain of this team. That's a serious distance out, just outside the 45. Is he going to nail this? You don't often see it off the ground. That's a beauty, but it's gone to the right, is it? It is just to the right. Reminded me of a Ross Carr in his pump for down. It's a skill you don't see much these days, unfortunately. I remember Ross back in the day, he'd take so long, kicking it into the hill in an All-Ireland final. Not phased at all, he was in his own zone, and he usually nailed it. What a player. Referee Jonathan Hayes is going to hold this one up, and he might want a word as well. So early in the second half, five minutes in, no scores yet in the second half. MTU Kerry have not scored in a long time. They were 4-2 up, remember. Their manager, by the way, is Aidan O'Mahony from Rathmore himself. Same as some of his players today, like Mark Ryan, the number 18. Aidan retired from playing in 2017 after winning five All-Irelands, two All-Stars. And then he went on, of course, famously to win Dancing with the Stars in 2017. And now he's trying to get his team over the line into what would be a fantastic achievement to get them into a Sigerson Cup final. But they've work to do. He has to work this one out. Michael Potts from Dr. Crooks. This is Ryan from Rathmore. But NUIG have a really good defensive system in there. Now the referee has spotted something off the camera, or off camera rather, down to the left. And there's a lot of pulling and dragging in there. And the NUIG player is appealing to the umpire or the lines person over on that far side there. And that is who the referee, Jonathan Hayes, has gone to have a word with now to see. Did he see anything? Obviously a few men jostling off the ball and in the first half it was interesting, the referee, I think it was the first score for NUIG, he spotted a little bit of pulling by an MTU defender off the ball and gave a free in in front of the posts. But he didn't spot that one, but maybe his lines person did. So a real cat and mouse game, a real stalemate. Six points to four, so much at stake. MTU carry four points NUIG six points and now the referee going in there to have a word and he's having a word with Sean Kelly that's the number nine for NUIG and I'm trying to see who the MTU player is and they all end up pals anyway they're okay and they're just going to get on with the game no need for any cards I think it was Brosnan was in there, wasn't it? Long distance from me, where I'm standing. And now it's all happening over on that far side in the second half. Way over the other side from us. Referee's going to hop it now. And it's touched down. Oh, and NUIG quickest on the break. And it's nipping in there. I think that's even Evan Looney, who did well there, number five, to claim that. And indeed... They get the free MTU and they get it brought forward. Really need a score just to get them back on the board, just to settle them. It's been far too long since they've scored. That's Brosnan, I think, way over in that corner, almost in the dark, and he gets a free and NUAG very unhappy with that one. And 
it's all getting a little bit hot tempered out there as you'd expect it's very tense very very tricky angle I wouldn't say they're desperate for a score yet but they could certainly do with one and he has got it first score in a long long time brings it back to 6-5 oh you can almost sense the relief for MTU Kerry that they finally got a score back to a one point game Connor Carroll the goalkeeper from Roscommon Playing for Russ Common, it hangs in the air though. And I thought for a moment there that Sean, or rather Daryl Lyne, the number nine from Legion, was going to get it, but it is MTU who have possession. Paul O'Shea. This is Jack Savage. Savage looks to get it into Moynihan. Moynihan to Brosnan. That's the connection. Those are the star names for MTU Kerry, but they've been very well marshalled tonight serious tackling serious pressure but a foul and they're not happy again and the referee bringing it in and they're punished even further and now it's looking like that could be an equaliser and the referee taking no nonsense double punishment for NUIG he drills it over and in the space of a minute, we've gone from 6-4 to level game. Just checking on Facebook for the numbers watching. And indeed, on YouTube, where we're nearly up to 3,000 people watching. And I think we might get a few more in the closing stages because this looks like it's going down to the wire. Who is going to make the Sigerson Cup final? 19 minutes to go. NUIG were 6 4 up. It's come back now to 6 all, but they're looking to get in front again. That's Sweeney who made a run there and was well picked out as well. And he's on his left foot, but he's put that to the left and wide. Agonizing for NUIG. It looked like he got a bit of space. Very intelligent running. But put it wide. So 11 and a half minutes into the second half. And NUIG have not scored yet in this half. And that, bro that ball breaks into the arms of Gavin Burke. Who takes it gratefully. The man from Curra Finn. Read it beautifully. Gets a free. Now NUIG. What can they do? comes back to Burke Sweeney now it's their turn to try and find a way through don't think we've had a single goal chance in the game it's this set up mirroring, mirroring the other team trying to find a way through they don't care if they win three points to two as long as they can just sneak over the line it's that tactical battle, like a game of chess. Six points each. No particular rush for either team just yet. Just to remind you again, there's another live stream coming up thanks to higher education GEA and to Electric Ireland that's at 7.30 from Carlo the second semi-final UL against DCU the holders now NUAG trying to get back into the lead that's high but I think it's going to the right and it has gone to the right and wide and NUAG remain without a score in the second half 13 minutes into the half Keith O'Leary the goalkeeper from Kilcommon, same club as Paul O'Shea at number 10 and same club as the former GEA president Sean Kelly, now an MEP of course. NUIG get it from the kick out and get it back. And they're trying to manufacture something and Fionn McDonough is in the middle but it would take an ambitious and very accurate ball to reach him so they'll probably spread the play out to Gavin Burke here. 
the Galway man from Currafin comes back inside. Now they've created an opening. Here's a chance. And it is indeed popped over the bar. Nicely their first score of the second half from Tony Gill. Also from Currafin. Made in Currafin. Finished by Currafin. And it's now seven points to six. And NUIG sneak back in front. Fifteenth minute of the second half. After all that good work by MTU Kerry, a little bit of a standoff in the middle, but the referee gives the free to MTU Kerry. He's going to bring that one on, isn't he? Because the ball, I think, was kicked away. It doesn't really matter. They're quite happy to play it from where they got it. Evan Looney now from Dr. Crooks. Goes down the left-hand side and slips it to Daryl Lyne. Now Daryl Lyne comes inside. And this is Ryan from Rathmore to Mackesy from Ardfert. And NUAG have just got back. They've got their shape. They're sitting in there. They have one or two players free in the middle, just watching the situation. And a sort of a sweeper role in there. So they're marking space as well as marking players. And they're just saying, well, come and try and find a way through. This is Line from Legion. Now, have they created a little bit of an opening in the same way NUIG did a minute ago? It's Ryan again, and he finds a little pocket of space in there to go to, so he gives and goes with Tommaso O'Connor. O'Shea changes the direction of the attack, gives it to Moynihan. Moynihan with that goal against Dublin in the National League to help Kerry beat them. He'd love a goal now, and it's surely a goal would be decisive in this game because it's so low scoring, but it's NUAG now who have a chance to go for goal and on the break they are trying to take out a lot of the defenders and make sure they get it up before they don't have time to get it back. This is Tom O'Callaghan working a little bit of magic. Gets support from Rory Egan who's done well to get up there, but they're going to come all the way back to Cahill Donoghue. The awfully man gives it out to McDonough he's from Mayo and this is Kelly Owen Kelly and this is Sean Kelly and just as we saw a minute ago it's one team trying to break down another's defensive rigid system they're going around the edges can they find a way through? They look like there's a pocket there and they might even get through for a goal. They have got through and surely, oh, and they don't connect and somehow the ball does not end up in the net. It looked like that was going to be maybe a decisive moment, but look at this. They've robbed the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper has been caught out. That's O'Leary and there's a chance here. He's out of his goals. They don't go for goal. They go for a point. It comes off the post high up and then goes over and that could be an important score. It could have been more, but they'll take a point. NUIG, eight points and MTU carry six and there is the chance again you see oh so close two in it for NUIG they have hit back and they may hit back even more he calls the mark as he's falling there Matthew Tierney I've never seen that one before managed to catch it and in midair got the hand up gets the ball back NUIG have responded impressively 18th minute of the second half and there's another effort are they going to go three up no that's just going to drop to the right but yeah an impressive response from them after two points in a minute for NTU so they've re-established control so great result last night in the Fitz can they do the same in the Sigerson NUIG now O'Leary had a scare a minute ago. He gets over that. Pumps the ball high to the right. And it breaks kindly for NUIG. They're having a bit of a purple patch at the minute. Everything is dropping for them. Sweeney is out around the middle. Number 15. Free for NUIG. They take it quickly because there's room in behind here. They nearly get through for a goal. They'll take a point if they can get in to go three ahead if they can, but it's another white. It's tense. <laughs> it is 
nail biting stuff coming in to the last 11 minutes or so NUIG on the verge of the Sigerson final long time to go only two points up but it is two points they haven't won it since 2003 it would be a huge achievement for them and look at the tackling there brilliant NUAG winning a lot of those exchanges around the middle and they're winning a lot of the ball NTU not happy but really sharp tackling there and it's going to be a free to NUIG and they have got the upper hand at the minute they are in control we're up to 2,900 in fact no correct that we're up to three and a half thousand watching on YouTube it's also available on Facebook with a lot of people watching there as well but the main audience is on YouTube hope you're enjoying the coverage it is thanks to the higher education GEA committee for making this game available and the second semi-final which is coming up after this on a live stream as well so a double header for you tonight for free that's DCU against UL at 7.30 at the minute it's looking like NUIG now is that a change? I see Tomas O'Connor, the number three for MTU Kerry going towards the side. In fact, I think it's a double change. I think that's two. I think Paul O'Shea's gone off as well. I'll try and confirm that for you in a moment. But NUIG are back on the attack again. Two up. Looking to go three up at an important time in the game. Coming into the last ten minutes. They've missed the game. That's three in about three or four minutes from NUIG. They've got two. They've gone back in front, but they could be five up easily. A period of dominance for the Galway College, formerly UCG, of course. Now, this is important. They all go up for it, and that was Daryl Lyon went up for it, but it's spilled, and MTU just can't get a ball for love nor money, no matter what they do. But there's a challenge going in, and that's a free given away. Goalkeeper or referee right on the spot. And this is a chance. They'll take their time. And this could make it three. McDonough was the man fouled. Tierney will take it. And we saw him a few minutes ago hitting one off the ground. There's a yellow card actually has been shown. Tierney, is he going to take this one out of his hands? He took the previous one off the ground from further out. It was outside the 45 and at a worse angle. This one he is happy to take out of his hands. Great camera angle here to see where this goes. Eight points to six. Matthew Tierney, captain of the team. Vice captain of Galway. Left footed. No mistake. Three up for NUIG as we enter the last nine minutes of the game. Now there's a bit of a mismatch out here as you see in the foreground there of the shot. Because Daryl Lyon is out there and he's got Gavin Burke on him and he's towering above them if he can get it out there but he decides to go the other way O'Leary and this is where the ball has been won a lot by NUIG but on this occasion it's MTU carry now three down and in this kind of a low scoring game that's a lot so they're going to need to get on the scoreboard soon they haven't had a sniff of goal in the second half and not much in the first either so they can't rely on that 9-6 53rd minute of the game we're in the last seven minutes and more importantly NUIG are winning all the important exchanges like that one they're turning it over and they're hitting MTU on the break they're moving really smoothly they're finding openings as well and they're taking their time and taking their scores in fact if you count the three misses they could have had five or six and they might even get a goal now what a run this is and he's still going it goes low oh brilliant save though and that keeps MTU Kerry in the game. O'Leary with the save. Keith O'Leary. Now the referee I think has brought it back. It might even be a free in. As you'll see there was men hanging off him. We've seen him do that so often in this competition. That's Kelly. And that is a great save. And he's so disappointed there Sean Kelly. But he might get a score out of this in the end. And another card there. And is that two yellows? And it's a red. It is indeed. I think he got a yellow a few minutes ago and that's a second and MTU carry down to 14 players and I think that's Evan Looney the number five from Dr. Crooks so it's all going wrong for Aidan O'Mahony's team
A man down and now I think they're going to be four points down. Double figures for NUIG. Ten points to six. Hi, O'Leary. MTU Kerry. Running out of time. Six minutes left. Scored two points in the second half. They came within a minute, but since then it's been all NUIG. No real drama in this game, but lots of excellent organised, disciplined play. And NUIG controlling at the minute. They're just winning everything. It's getting to a stage where MTU will have to go for broke. Whatever that means to them. 10 points to 6. 25th minute of the second half. MTU down to 14. Over in the gloom on the far side, NUAG taking their time. I think that's Kelly over there. It's a safe bet. There's three Kellys out there. Has he got that? You know he has. He's nailed it from distance and now they go five up. They hit three or four wides. They've had a period of dominance which could have won them this game. O'Leary comes to this side and he's looking for one of his midfielders. In fact, he was looking for Mark Ryan. They have got it on the break, but now it's desperate times for MTU. Kerry. They've only scored two points in the second half. They find themselves five down after getting level. This is Moynihan from Spa and Killarney. Got a goal against Dublin in the league at the weekend. They'd love another one now, but they actually even need more than that. This is Ryan trying to find, find a way through. He's fouled up. And NUAG will take that all day long. 11 points to 6, and it's Jack Savage over this one from Karen's O'Rahilly. 26-year-old, recalled to Kerry after four years. Now it's his college who needs him. Connects well, that's going over, you feel. And it is indeed, and it's their first score in a long time, and it'll give them maybe a little bit of hope, a little bit of impetus. But there's only three and a half minutes left, and they're four down, and NUAG have not looked like they're going to leak a goal and it looks like a goal is needed for the boys from Tralee at this stage. Connor Carroll sends it high into the dark sky here in Rathkeel and that's broken kindly for NUIG and there's a foul. Twenty-one. Gavin Durkin has been in from the start. If you're just joining us and you saw a twenty-one there for NUIG, and they're quite happy to hold on to the ball. They will do this for the next two or three minutes, whatever is needed. They are moving extremely nicely, and this man loves to burst forward. He really does. Sean Kelly nearly got through for a goal a few minutes ago. Just feeds it in now. He says, just keep it up in the corner there if you like. We're only a few minutes here from a Sigerson final, but now it's come back out. And this is Jack Savage. Can they catch NUIG on the break here? This is Brosnan, but he's been well shepherded by Sweeney. Comes inside, meets a wall of maroon, comes onto the left side, and he got it over the bar, I think, but the referee had already blown for a free, and they'll want to take this nice and quickly to get it back to a three-point game and then they'll think can we get a goal and force extra time here with a dramatic piece of play it's not looking likely at the minute I have to say but you never know we're in the 29th minute for that scenario to come about they need this to go over connects nicely pops it over and the referee blowing his whistle there I think he's Allowing a substitution. And both teams of subs over on the far side. So I can't see who's 
coming on or off to be honest it's an NUAG change I can tell you that I can tell you also they have 15 players to 14 they have a three-point advantage a one-man advantage and we're just ticking now into the 30th minute but here is a chance for MTU they have men over Jack Savage is there they need a little bit of magic he goes for his left side can he take his point that's dangerous and it goes over the bar. They're not dead yet, MTU. 11 to 9. Three in a row. He put over on his right. Puts over on his left. Decided to just take that. Now if they get a goal, they'll win it. An unlikely scenario a few minutes ago. There was five points in it. But now only two. And we are in added time. It's tense here in Rathkill. This is important ball and MTU Kerry have got it. They have the sideline. Two points down. They're going to this side to Dara Line. A little bit of room for him. Drama at the end here, possibly, if Jack Savage can do something about it or Brosnan. But an NUAG wall there. Now Brosnan, what an angle to go for, but he's going for it. Has he got it? No, it's gone right. It hasn't even gone out. It's still there. And that probably suits them because they're trying to create something. They need a goal. If they get a goal, they'll snatch this. It would be unlikely, but they're still there. The word from beside me is just kick it in, but they're taking their time. They're trying to engineer something. But they're running out of time. We're well into added time at the end here. And it's almost up. Referee looks at his watch. MTU carry agonizingly. Two points down. They need a goal. A point you feel won't be enough. But here's Savage. He goes for his point and he's nailed it, you know. He has. He's made it a one point game. And maybe there is time. They've got four in a row to bring it back to a one point game. And this man has done a lot of the finishing and he's made it into a very nail biting finish for everybody from NUIG. Five up, now one up. Eleven plays ten. Now this is so important. Possession from this. Can NUH get, get it? They got almost every 50-50 for about ten minutes. But now it's MTU in possession. They'll have at least one attack. Eleven plays ten. Can they force extra time? Dara Moynihan. Is there a bit of Moynihan magic? Or Brosnan magic? Oh, what is he... Got his mark, now he feeds it back out. They've been very patient. Can they draw another score? It has got so tense here. I can't believe they've scored four in a row when they looked dead. This has been a terrific comeback by MTU. And there is a foul, it's a free in, but a really bad angle. And I'm sure the word from the side is, don't say anything because this referee will move it in if you're not careful. Surely, surely he's not going to put it over from there. I can hardly see him. He's so far out. Actually, he goes to hit short and he's going to get it back to try to work a better angle. And there is one last chance. He kicks left footed, but it's not going to be enough. It's gone to the right and wide. He might have been better taking it from the free. Time so nearly up. Maybe it is up. The referee, Jonathan Hayes, watches it. He has his whistle in his mouth. In Rathkeel, a chilly, chilly night here in February. The play goes on. Important possession, one in the middle of the field. And it was Gavin Durkin. Durkin now sends it into the MTU half. Gives it to McDonough. NUIG seem to have survived that little onslaught. The referee will give a free. He give advantage and now he gives it to NUIG. And that suits them very nicely. This is Tierney, captain of the team. Gives it short to Kelly. They're just trying to play ball here. They're trying to play down the clock in the last few seconds. They are on the verge of a Sigerson Cup final. Paul Kelly, the Galway captain. Tierney, the Galway vice captain. Referee checks his watch. NUAG within touching distance. Oh, and he's going to 
take even more time here. He's going to set it down, even though he's well outside the 45. He is going to eat up a few more seconds here. The captain of NUIG, Tierney, and will just launch it in there. Game may be over, and he arrows that to try and pass a ball, but it's actually been intercepted. I thought the referee might blow. He looks at his watch, the referee, as he's running, but he's allowing this. There is surely only seconds left. There's one more attack, but can they get it up there? It doesn't look like it. Deep, deep into added time. It's nail biting stuff here in Rath Keel. Yellow card shown. Three and a half thousand watching on YouTube, enjoying this tense, tense finish in Rath Keel. Seconds left. The referee has looked at his watch several times. MTU Kerry are given time for one last attack. Dean Carew, the only temporary man out there, trying to help the Kerry men. The referee looking at his watch and he's given a signal, I think, to say it's nearly up. One last attack. Dara Moynihan with it. Is there some magic from Moynihan? He tries to find a way through. This is do or die stuff. It's last chance saloon and he's got a free, you know. He has drawn a free and you see Michael Potts there punching the air because this is a golden opportunity to force extra time. Incredible drama here in Rathkeel and heartbreaking for NUIG. Five points up about five minutes ago and now it looks like they might have to go to extra time. We're up to 4,000 people watching on YouTube. More on Facebook. You have a choice of places to watch it, but most on YouTube. And they are watching a very tense finish. This to level it. This to go to extra time. Jack Savage. He absolutely nails it. And you hear the crowd. They love that. What a comeback by the boys from Tralee. 14 carry men, one temporary man. They have come back from five down to level it. And the referee is surely going to blow his whistle now. And we are going to get extra time in this game. And there it is. What a comeback by MTU Kerry. That did not like po look possible. That did not look lively. Likely, rather. I'm looking at live on the screen here. <laughs> I said lively instead of likely, but you know what I mean. Players going off for a rest. I think we need a rest as well. We will take a break for a few minutes, but we will be right back with the start of the uh, first period of extra time.
we're back on for extra time. We did not expect this, and certainly NUIG did not expect it. When they were five points up, we went deep, deep into extra added time at the end of the second half. The referee is taking his time now. He's having a word, I think, with maybe one of his lines. People know they're right in the middle, but anyway, we're not about to start. We've, is, is he talking to Ian O'Mahony over there? He is sorting a few things out, for example, in extra time. Is it 15 against 15 again? Things like that. Getting everything in place. Jonathan Hayes, the referee. The other Electric Ireland semi-final is due to start at 7.30. So we're going to have two streams on for a, f well, for a little while from both games because this one is going to extra time. So, ref throws it in. We have another period of extra time, two periods of extra time, of course. We have more football here on a chilly night in Rathkeel, as I keep saying, because it's freezing. My little toes are frozen. But we have entertainment warming us up on this February night in the Sigerson Cup. Such a famous, fantastic competition. Always throws up games like this. I go all the way back to a game that went to extra time on my first experience of Sigerson Cup in 1989 on a dark afternoon at Queen's University in Belfast when Trinity College went to extra time against UCC. Trinity had Joe Brawley and UCC had Morris Fitz and the goals were flying and there was four goals on each team. There were points put in from either sideline by Morris Fitz and I swear he put them off either foot. And that was my first experience of Sigerson. What an experience it was. And now the competition is still special and still producing players that go on to achieve great things in the game. This is where they learn a lot of their game. 19, Ryan Monaghan is in for NUIG. You'll have seen the 19 there in the last few minutes. His brother Kane is in the subs. They're both from Outerard. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong with my northern pronunciation. Outerard is it? Outerard? Just outside Galway City anyway, I think. Neil Mulcahy from Moy Cullen out that way as well. Number three involved there in NUIG trying to take the game to MTU. And you know, maybe one of the problems was that they sat back a little bit, a little bit too much of their five point lead and they get caught in the end. And Jack Savage was absolutely deadly accurate. And that's why we are an extra time. 11 points each. Back to all square. And it's the same pattern as the game earlier on. There is one MTU player in the opposition half. So the 14 other players all sitting in. And NUIG just taking their time. I'm sure they can't believe they are here, but they are. And this is Colin Murray from Mount Bellew trying to burst through. Doesn't manage to do so. They'll try again. There's a nice ball played low into the danger area to Kelly. Comes back out though almost immediately. And that's Monaghan. Now, is there a pocket of space? Is there a chance? They tried to get it in the corner and the Interception nearly came from Daryl Lyon, but not quite. Four MTU players there putting serious pressure and then they lash it clear, but straight back to NUIG. And I see there Brosnan pulling up. That looked a little bit worrying. That's the sort of injury you think that might be a muscle injury. He's hobbling, certainly. He's trying to stretch. Maybe, don't think it would be cramped, but... Back with the play, NUIG, get back in the lead. First score in extra time, three and a half minutes into it. Their patience paid with that score from the Galway captain, Paul Kelly. So after conceding five in a row, they have got the first in extra time and it's 12 plays 11. Just checking off camera to see how Brosnan is and he looks to be okay. A 
and this is what we're going to get in extra time. Players going down with injuries. They're playing a lot of football at the minute, and this one has been a tough, tough game. And now they're having to give it again in extra time. Just checking on YouTube and Facebook the odd time as we go to see what you're all thinking and making of this Sigerson Cup semi-final and just to remind you it is now 7.30 so you have a choice the other Electric Ireland Sigerson Cup semi-final is now being live streamed from Carlo So three and a half thousand people watching on this stream. Not sure about the other one, but I'm sure it's going to get a good audience as well because DCU, the holders in that one against UL. So you can join that one if you like or stay with us here to see how this one finishes. It's MTU playing the same way they did in the second half in the first period of extra time now, if you can follow that. But they're behind again. free for NUIG. I would usually ask for contenders for a player of the match around now, or maybe 10 minutes ago actually, but it was very exciting towards the end, so I didn't get to do that. But there is one contender has come in without me suggesting it, and that's on YouTube. Kelly, the best player of the match, or on the pitch. There's three of them out there actually. Three brothers, of course, from Mike Cullen. So 12 to 11, NUIG trying to turn the screw. And here is one of the Kellys. Finds a little bit of space and he loves to run and he's got support off the shoulder as well. And this could be a point again. And it is indeed, it's really nicely finished by Tony Gill from Corafin. And he takes a little low five from the other Corafin man, Gavin Burke. And it was made by Kelly, the Galway captain. And that's a two-point lead now for NUIG. So you have to give credit to NUIG because they conceded five in a row. Mentally, that's a tough one. But they have re-established and they have kicked on in extra time. Substitution over on the far side. I'll let you know what that is if I can pick it up as we go on. Play on this side though, very close to us here, and that is Ryan O'Grady, number 15. Or O'Grady, maybe he's pronounced there, from Legion. Wearing 15, but I don't think he started the game. This is Tommaso Shea from on Gale Tux. The ball spills though, and NUIG have got back into the groove. This is the way it was before the comeback. The referee's going to want to have a word for that. One of those ones that I think looked worse than it actually was. But a yellow card nonetheless for O'Shea. Referee holding the game up because there's another substitution and it's for MTU Kerry. So Aidan O'Mahony making switches and 21 has come in and that's Jake Foster. Leashman actually from Port Harlington. So the Tipperary man surrounded by Kerry men, but not all Kerry men now. This is Cahill Sweeney. He's covered a lot of ground tonight for his team. And they love to get it through to one of the Kellys and they love to run with it. But this time they've been caught in there. Now he's been held up off the ball. But it's broken kindly. They've got it back in UIG. They went through a period in the second half where they couldn't do anything wrong and then they couldn't do anything right. They're back in it now though and this is Kelly driving forward. Now he's gone down and the referee hasn't called it back but he doesn't need to because it's been put over the bar by Tierney and that's one of the best scores of the game and it makes it three points in it. This has been a brilliant response in extra time. It goes to 14-11 for NUIG and that's deadly off the left. 
good driving run by Kelly, but he suffered in there and he's still down, so he's getting treatment. Referee going over to have a word with his lines person, but he didn't see anything on towards, so no further action being taken, but MTU have suffered enough. They were punished there with that score, and after that brilliant comeback, they've gone three down again. I think he's okay to continue and so are we actually he's hobbling quite badly but he is making a good effort to get back try to run it off not long left at the end of this period I see 22 in for MTU as well that's Mark Fitzgerald from Dr Crooks brilliant take in the middle of the field there and that was Gavin Durkin who's been in right from the start don't worry about that number 21 on his back he started the game and he's still out there and that was brilliant and NUAG when they really go for it they do seem to be the better team the problem is they sat back in the last six or seven minutes and they let MTU come at them and you can't do that when they players like Moynihan and Savage in there and that's what happened but now it's NUAG with Kelly this is Sean Kelly slipping it to his brother this is better and that could be a foul and certainly it will be and he's allowed to go on but it's going to be brought back and there might even be a yellow card here as well it's all NUIG and extra time and the contender for player of the match has been clarified Connor says he meant Sean Kelly just to be clear thanks for that Jack Savage has been excellent as well says Hugh this could be the last kick of the first period of extra time and it could put four in it and it is Tierney makes it 15 to 11 and it's not the last kick we keep going 10 minutes have been played and extra time a little bit of frustration showing there and the referee is going to bring that on so MTU had not scored an extra time playing the same way they did in the second half when they got that five points in a row towards the end but whether they eased off or NUIG just went for it, I'm not quite sure. Maybe a mixture of both. So a free for MTU. The referee says get on with it. And they do get on with it. Jake Foster involved haven't scored in the first period of extra time that could fall for them though and it does you know I think that's number six all the way up there and he boots it out of frustration but I think a free has been given so they might after all get a free in extra time or a point in extra time from the free referee sorting it all out and letting it all calm down Brosnan has the ball. Referee has a word with his lines person. Maybe you need to just clarify something there. Is he going to talk to somebody? He is, you know, and he's speaking to Brosnan, who's got the score. Actually, no, he's bringing over Sean Kelly. Well, that was clear. Yellow card, and if you do something else, you'll be off. No nonsense from the ref. Brosnan has it. His team haven't scored in extra time. They've conceded four times, so they've almost put themselves back in the same position. That almost went to five, but now it's three. Referee is going to allow a substitution, I think. 
That's why he's holding up play. And I think it's 18 going off for MTU. That's Mark Ryan, who's really put in a shift. Now the short kick out is being pressed illegally. Free out for NUIG. It's been a long night and it's going to get even longer. But there is the end of the first period of extra time. And a little bit of a set too on that far side. Two boys haven't finished yet, even though the whistle is gone. A few more going in to join them over there. Tensions spilling over and a lot of pushing and shoving and the goalkeeper gets involved and MTU not appreciating that one at all. Cold, cold night but the temperature rising on the pitch. 15 plays 12. It is half time and extra time but the referee still having work to do to settle this down. And the players wisely been told to get away from there. The referee's got two players there. One is the goalkeeper. And that's the NUIG goalkeeper, Connor Carroll. He's calling Brosnan over. Referee writing. So we had a sending off in normal time. Are we going to get something similar here in extra time? At half time. Definitely cards by the looks of it, but what way are they going? One for the goalkeeper and one for Brosnan from what I can see. And now we'll have the half time, extra time break. We'll just stay with you. Just to remind you, the other semi-final in the 2022 Electric Ireland Sigerson Cup has started, I'm sure, in Carlo. It was due to start at 7.30. That's UL against DCU. So there's a live stream in that one as well, so you have a choice of viewing. We thought we'd be finished here before that one, but we're still going because of a magnificent comeback by MTU Kerry. Formerly IT Tralee won the cup in 1999, 23 years ago, when Jim McGuinness was the captain. So they have a good history in this competition in recent times, and I say that in context because it's recent compared to NUIG, who were formerly UCG, who were formerly in the competition as that, way back, right from the start in 1911. And they have 22 wins in the competition. The last though in 2003, a proud history for NUIG and tonight they were so, so close to getting back into the final. Five points up and they were caught right at the death, deep into added time. So that's the scenario here in Rathkeel in Mick Neville Park. MTU Kerry against NUIG. A period of extra time to go. NUIG won the first period by four points to one. So it's 15-12. Players coming back out. Tempers being lost at the end of the first period of extra time. Referee calmed it down, showed a few cards, but we expect it to get very tense again. Tierney has moved to midfield for NUIG. The captain of the team has put in quite a shift and he's there with Paul Kelly, who's the Galway captain. So the Galway captain and vice captain are right there in the middle for NUIG. And MTU have seven and 17. Never mind your eight and nine. 17 is Greg Horan from Austin Stacks. Off we go again. The big men go up for it. It breaks for MTU and it is Horan there who gets it from Austin Stacks. Now, Savage, he saved him in normal time. He's going to need to save them again. Does well to release it there. 
this is the leech man now he's come on as a sub that's foster he's been bottled up there trying to free himself and eventually does he's not happy with the holding there and the referee is going to want to have a word with tony gill about that book is coming out again and i guess it's stick or twist time for nuag they were five up they sat deep and they were punished for it in normal time near the end they're three up now do they sit in again or have they learned a lesson are they going to change or are mtu going to dictate the play those are the questions that are going to be answered savage puts it in high and it drops there and the goalkeeper almost spills it challenges coming in and the referee is going to have a word he doesn't seem to be making a decision just yet he tells savage to go away he wants to talk to his umpire the goalkeeper certainly found that a tricky one and it was a tricky ball and he seemed to catch it in a very unorthodox way and then almost spilled it now the referee is coming out what's he doing he's given a free in it's been a long night here in rathkeel we have a drama sporadically and you feel there's more to come it's back to a two-point game You don't often get rewarded in the modern game for just putting a high and hope in there but they did get reward there mtu Kerry. they've got the first point in the second period of extra time oh and the referee is going in to punish the goalkeeper here for not taking that a little bit quicker he's going to hop it of course on the 21 and nuig are they panicking mtu trying to get through they haven't had a goal so far but oh it's a free out free out it's starting to kick off here in Rathkeel. Tierney is back there helping his defence. Galway vice captain to the Galway captain. Back to the NUIG captain. And he's pushed over the line. And it is an MTU ball. And this is where NUIG are guilty of just sitting in there. The pressure is coming on and they just need to get it up the pitch and they fail to do so. They've been punished. Will they be punished with the score as well? Free in. MTU trying to turn the screw again. They've got it back to a two-point game. And this is just replicating what happened at the end of normal time. Brosnan. Way, way back at the start of the first period, or the first half of extra time. He did that right at the start. Seems a long time ago, but he's doing it again. And he's got it back to a one-point game. Number 19 is on there for MTU, by the way. Gary Vaughan, you may have seen there from Spa. Same team as Darren Moynihan. Same club. So he's come into the play, trying to spot substitutions as they come. Play being held up for another change. So play being held up. John Murphy's trying to tell me, and thank you for this information, I really don't mind being corrected. He says, Sean Kelly is Galway and not Paul Kelly. Sorry about that. I think I got that confused the last time. And then I went back and checked it and the notes were wrong. So wherever I got that from, apologies to the Kellys. Let's get back to the important stuff, back to the game. All right, this is Tony Gill trying to burst through gets a free referee will bring it back and it is very stop start but referee has got the book out again 15 plays 14 almost halfway through the second period of extra time and NUAG have the ball that's the important thing yellow card shown another one and there's a 34 out there for NUAG and it's slipped to 14. McDonough, I think that is. Yeah, it's McDonough. And he's through for a shot at goal. And he's put it just to the left. Just to the left. Looked like it was going over. But just misses. So it remains a one-point game. I'm not from NUAG. But I can sense that this is nail-biting. That one would have given them a two-point cushion. As it is, one point in it exactly halfway through the second period of extra time mtu 
they staged a great comeback before. They're trying to do it again. They were four points down and extra time. They brought it back to one. Number 20 is in there, I think. Anthony Darmody as well from Rathmore for MTU Kerry. Now, can they get through discipline defending? Although that looked like it might be a foul. In fact, you know what it was, and he's given it. <coughs> he's given it. And this is a golden chance for the boys in gold to level again. There you see it again. Tackle coming in. Oh, a little bit too enthusiastic, shall we say. I think it was Colin Murray in there, the man from Mount Bellew who conceded. And still we go on. 15 plays 14. Second period of extra time. MTU have been five down. They've been four down. They're level again. Would you believe it? 15 each deep into the second period of extra time. These boys will not lie down. Can NUAG do it again? They thought they'd won it. They thought they'd maybe won it again. They're having to win it for a third time. This is Tony Gill coming forward. Have NUIG got one more in them? It seems a long time since they've scored. The other semi-final has started, so that live stream is on. But we're definitely sticking with this one, and that's a free for NUIG. It's just end-to-end -end at the minute. Here it's not four to not two to UL in the other semi-final for DCU. But here a chance now for NUAG. Seven and a half minutes into the second period of extra time and he takes it. The captain has possibly, just possibly, and I say that because they thought they'd won it a couple of times. He's put them into the lead deep, deep into the second period of extra time. But this MTU carry team never know when they're beaten the hand on was from MTU but it spills for NUIG and they have a chance here to go two up and this could be decisive they might even get a goal and they lay it off there's a chance oh and it's saved by the goalkeeper O'Leary but it's been brought back and there will still be a chance for NUIG to go two up this has been a good response to be fair for NUIG after being brought level again they didn't fall apart Nineteenth minute of extra time. Two in a row, and NUIG might just be there at last. I've said it before, I'll say it again, it's last chance saloon for MTU Kerry. They need the ball, but they haven't got it. And it's number 13, Tom O'Colhan going into the corner. That's where NUAG want the ball to be, but they've lost it, it's spilled over the line. It's an MTU Kerry ball. Surely, NU surely rather, MTU Kerry haven't got it again. Oh, he's robbed him. That's brilliant work by McDonough, and there could be another score here. This could be the icing on the cake, and it is. It's gone over, and surely, surely, at last, in the 10th minute of the second period of extra time, surely NUAG have finally fought off a very brave effort from NTU Kerry. They picked their pocket there right at the end. They're three up, and barring a late, late goal, NUAG will be in the final. First time since 2003. There's time for one last attack. We're in the dying seconds. MTU Kerry, what can they do? It's desperate stuff out there. Challenges are flying in. A goal will do, nothing less. Jack Savage, what can he do? He's on his left, he puts it high as he's going for a point, but he puts it to the left, it goes well wide. We are into added time. Referee holds it up again because there's an injury way, way up the other 
side of the pitch the referee has to attend to that we're never going to finish tonight <laughs> referee says play on deep into added time at the end of the second period of extra time as can they do it again this time a point won't do oh and it's getting a little bit silly and the referee will want to talk to Dara Moynihan for that and in fact he's going to give me yellow and the ball is just booted out of the ground by a frustrated in fact it's a red it's a red for Moynihan right at the end he reacted and the referee gave him a yellow and then sent him off again and he's also calling him back once more in fact he's just having another word before he goes off but Moynihan sent off the Kerry man who got the goal at the weekend against Dublin has been sent off in deep injury time in this Sigerson Cup match he was being held by Matthew Tierney he got us free reacted got a yellow for that and then for booting the ball away he got another and that's him gone deep deep into added time and the referee is going to show another card and it's another red I think for Savage and NTU two men sent off in a matter of seconds it's all going wrong drama in a chilly night in Rathkeel on a chilly night 18 points to 15 deep deep into added time NTU down to 13 players in extra time surely it's all over the referee throws the ball up and still we play on it's been a long long night it's been a chilly night is it NUAG's night MTU Kerry will need a goal but they've only got 13 players and there's a reaction again and that was Brosnan on Tony Gill and the referee is reaching again for his card well actually he's gone to talk to his lines person and this is an unsavoury end to the game I don't believe it three red cards in just a few minutes for MTU Kerry they're down to 12 but well, we saw Tyrone getting a lot of men sent off against Armagh and now tonight three red cards right at the end a smile on the face of Paul Kelly because he knows it's all over surely we're well well into added time at the end of the second period of extra time and it is all over and finally finally NUAG have done it you see what it means to them they're through to the finals for the first time since 2003 19 long years the Kelly brothers have been magnificent Matthew Tierney has been magnificent and they showed great character in extra time to come through and they will play the winners of DCU and UL a brave brave effort from the boys from NTU Kerry but right at the end the frustration spilled over they had three red cards but that didn't really matter to the performance to the result that was just a bit of frustration in the end it's NUIG who go forward and what a two days has been for them their hurlers last night won in the Electric Ireland Fitzgibbon Cup to get through to the semis and their footballers are now in the Sigerson Cup final it's been a cold night it's been a dramatic night I hope you've enjoyed it we're going to leave it there you can go and watch the other live stream now if you wish DCU against UL to see who plays this team but from our team here on the live stream in Rathkeel it's goodbye